Buses roared by as critics stood on the corner next to Penn Station in Newark and called on NJ Transit to dump its diesel fleet, noting transportation belches out almost half of New Jersey's greenhouse gas pollution in a city where an EPA study showed one in four kids suffers from asthma. It is loud, it is dirty, and it is unhealthy. And the reason we are joined here today is because we are calling on New Jersey Transit to join the rest of the country to make a commitment to electrify its full bus fleet by 2040. This is a goal that more than 60 other transit agencies have started to take. And it's quite unfortunate that New Jersey Transit does not understand the importance of ensuring that they electrify their buses. We need immediate action now. This is an environmental justice health crisis. NJ Transit's already buying eight electric buses for a Camden pilot program in 2021. They cost about $700,000 more per vehicle than a diesel bus, but advocates argue the state would save in maintenance and health care costs. NJ Transit's capital budget currently includes $100 million to buy several hundred buses as it updates its fleet of 1,200. And while CEO Kevin Corbett supports going electric in concept, he's unsure about charging an entire fleet. This one thing of it's in your garage is when you're talking, you know, up to 500 buses at a depot, that's an incredible uh, electric load. Uh, and you look at the charging times, et cetera. This is a long range plan, not something that needs to be done right now this year. So we think under the energy plan for New Jersey Transit, they should be moving to electrified vehicles. And money's always a problem at the underfunded agency. NJ Transit spent $302 million as it pushes to complete positive train control installation by the federal 2020 deadline. Today it approved more than $50 million in PTC contracts at a regular board meeting where advocates demanded more transparency. What are we getting? What's been done since the new administration has taken over? It has become more and more opaque here so opaque here that I feel like my cataract surgery never helped me, you know? It's, it's really bad. The clock is ticking. You have only 15 and a half months to get the job completely done, or else the agency will face the potential of, of massive fines. Riders also complained about trains still out of service, mainly due to a chronic lack of engineers to drive them. NJ Transit's recruited about 100 new engineers. It's got seven training classes running concurrently. Experts say the courses are extremely difficult. You put all this together, you're talking about probably a thousand pages that has to be digested, in some cases memorized and clearly understood by every locomotive engineer in order to operate safely. The dropout rates are usually very high among locomotive engineer students, but critics have accused NJ Transit of letting struggling students stay in the program despite multiple test failures because the agency's so desperate for bodies. Corbett denied it. We're taking what I view as a more progressive approach without any way lowering the standards, that once we get them in, we screen them, we want to see it's, uh, there, uh, there is going to be a, a failure rate. We know that. It's a tough life lifestyle and it's much more complicated it's like becoming a, an airline pilot I've mentioned that as far as the testing so we, you know we anticipate a certain amount of uh, fall off from a class but in no ways are we cutting uh, compromising the standards but we do want to help those who are as they go along to get the coaching that they need to make sure they do uh, do pass. NJ Transit hopes to graduate three new engineering classes within the next four months and says that will be the key to fewer train cancellations. In Newark I'm Brenda Flanagan NJ TV News. Thank you.